Hi, this is Don, and this is one of two videos to talk about um, setting up DMX effects in Finale and using them with Mongoose. So um, here we have a show. It includes both pyro as well as flame effects, which you can see. And we're going to concentrate on the flame effects today uh, and show you how to set up safety channels and uh, import them into Mongoose. So, we'll stop the show for now. First thing we're going to do is notice the positions here. Their yellow positions are pyro positions, and the blue positions are DMX positions. And, you know, you set those up by adding a position uh, and, and making it of type DMX. Um, first of all, what I'll do is get rid of all the pyro uh, from the script, make it invisible. So what I'm going to do is in the script window, uh, filter on uh, the, pyro, the flame positions only. And you do that by control clicking. And we have nine positions. And as you now see, all of the uh, effects are gone except for the flame positions. And if we wanted to, you know, set those up or see them through here, you know, you'll only see the flames. So, some notes about uh, the pyro positions. Um, when you set them up, they each have position properties. It's a type of DMX fixture. It's going to be the mongoose, uh, mongoose either 2x24 shot or 48 shot with DMX. Um, and in this case, um, you don't really have to worry about most of these. Um, I put it in the Universe 2. This show is actually a hybrid show with a Starfire script in Universe 1 and all the Mongoose stuff in Universe 2. And there's a difference between DMX universes and the regular universe. So the regular universe lets you use multiple firing systems in one show. The DMX universe is ultimately what's going to be defined for um, uh, an individual uh, field unit. So in effect for Mongoose, the DMX universe is the same number as the logical ID you would put on the um, field unit. Since Mongoose can have many units that are of uh, different um, DMX controllers, you can actually um, assign different logical IDs to each controller and each one would become a different DMX universe. But for simple shows, you could set all the DMX controllers to with the same logical ID um, and, you know, they will basically transmit all the commands down their cable to whatever. So you probably don't have to get into multiple universes, uh, uh, multiple Mongoose DMX controllers until uh, you get to some very complex shows. But in this case, what I'm going to do is click on one of these. Um, and if you click on multiples, it, it, it marks these as undefined because they differ between the individual units. But when you set up a DMX fixture, um, the DMX universe will be 2, which when it is exported translates to Mongoose Logical ID 2. You can make that whatever you want. And then you have the base address of the DMX base address of the uh, particular flame unit. Uh, and then you t pick the fixture type, which then selects the commands available. So here we have a Chauvin Circle Flamer in position 2. We have a Micro Flamer. Again, it's DMX Universe 2, since it'll all be driven by the same cable or multiple um, field units with the same logical ID. Uh, either way works. Uh, it really depends on the length of your cable and where all these units are in your show. Uh, this one actually had a DMX base address of 1, and it's a Micro Flamer, which only has two channels. Um, the fourth one here is another Micro Flamer. Uh, the third one is a Volcano. And this one, again, sits in DMX Universe 2, has a DMX base channel of 40, and, and, and this has five independently controllable heads. Um, so the DMX command set going out to each of these is different, and all you mainly have to do is make sure that given the channels for each unit, the base addresses stay out of each other's way, so you don't have any overlapping within the DMX space. Um, so that kind of gives you um, an overview of how the 
individual um, DMX positions are set up, and I'm sure Finale has some videos on, on how to actually set up DMX. But in terms of Mongoose, the DMX universe translates to the logical ID of the DMX controller, and then the base address is the base address of that particular uh, item. So one thing to call out about DMX is most flame units have something called a safety channel. And the safety channel has to be engaged in order to fire anything. And here we have uh, three circle flamers in the show and all the safety channels got turned on at the same time for this segment of the show. And, uh, you know, there's uh, one safety channel for the circle flamer for each unit out there. Um, for the four micro flamers out there, there's a safety channel. And for the volcanoes, there's a safety channel. What this is is a specific DMX channel that has to have a certain value in order for the flames to work. It's really kind of a, in DMX world, it's not always very reliable communication. And that's just the nature of DMX. Uh, in fact, the DMX spec says it shouldn't be used for pyro, but people are doing it anyway. And one of the ways they're getting around the fact that the DMX is not always reliable is they have these safety channels, which essentially uh, arm uh, the DMX unit independently of the arm of the field unit. Um, and, and this gets it ready to take commands to actually shoot the flames. Now, one of the what you have to do is you have to make sure you have um, your safety channels engaged, and you see the dots here. Uh, for the length of some some DMX effects. And one of the things that's associated with the channel is um, the duration, which we have here, which isn't normally shown in the setup by default, and you might have to go to the settings and add the field. Um, and with the duration here, it's 44 seconds. One important thing about Mongoose is the safety channels have to be 60 seconds or less each. So you might have to set them up several times here at a break between DMX effects. Um, you'll have to set up a safety channel for this set, and as you notice here, you know immediately after that safety channel terminates, we initially we immediately re-enable it, um, and over the next set of effects, um, we're going to look at expanding that in the future. But the duration-based safety channels um, are such that they need to stay under a minute each right now. Um, I'll show you in the next video a way to turn the safety channels on and off independently and not make it a duration-based event, which is the default for Finale, um, and, and be able to just turn them on and turn them off independently uh, throughout your program. But right now, we'll just use the duration-based safety channels. I'm not going to go into you know how to produce the DMX effects, but there's a set of DMX effects that are predefined in Finale for each of these uh, fixture types. Uh, so it knows what a circle flamer can do, it knows what a micro flamer can do, and it knows what the volcano flamers can do. So you can just go through and add those you know to your heart's content, and in the end you have all of these DMX fire points. Like here's a short sequence that was put together. So at this point, what we're going to do is uh, look at addressing the show and exporting it into Mongoose and seeing how it shows up over there. One of the things to note is that if you have a flame effect that isn't covered by a corresponding safety channel, uh, Finale will usually warn you that you're missing your safety channels, and those are associated uh, with each effect. So in this case, it's, um, they have a, a safety channel up here. And if I uh, release my filter here and click on it, it should uh, highlight it in the effects window. And in this case, you have the very, uh, you have the, the safety channels um, and all the various effects you have on the DMX available here. And here's the, the safety channel that it's selected. Um, so this is the DMX effect that sets the safety channel uh, over anything covering it. Since all nine units are used in this segment of the show, they just set the safety channels on all nine, uh, refresh it less than a minute forward, and then complete the segment of the show. So, and then once you get your show addressed and you have the entire show out here, 
uh, and needs to be exported, then you know you can export it uh, using the export firing system script files. Uh, so export options, it'll ask you about um, Starfire, and it output also a mongoose. So it's going to take the Starfire script and save it as one file type, and bring out mongoose as another one. So then we have the mongoose modules that we're driving the DMX as the basic demo show o2.mif. And uh, this is the mongoose interchange format, which can then be brought into our editor next and then uh, run within uh, mongoose. Now that we saved the MIF file, we're going to bring up uh, the mongoose editor. and we're going to do an import from file and in this case we want to import a mongoose interchange format file from finale and this is the file that we just output out of finale and it's a basic demo show uh, o2 which was the overall universe uh, doesn't have to do with the logical id this is just the fact that starfire was o1 within finale and mongoose was o2 so we'll import that and is this a pyro musical? Well, we're just going to kind of run it um, directly. So I'll say yes. Um, you could also just slave Mongoose to the Starfire timecode as well um, using uh, Cronbox, which would then be setting this to external timing. But since I don't have... Uh, the time code or external timing right now i'll just run it as a regular pyro musical show and i'll have the soundtrack uh, in there as well um, and what you'll see is that as it imports that it's going to create a number of things first is the script with the offset into the script and most of these are going to be trigger dmx commands and uh, these will trigger the various dmx commands you notice we set them all off a of field unit id 2 so they all have an id of 2 and then it uh, brings up the either the DMX queue or the DMX macro. Um, the multi queues right now there are none, but again we'll combine those into multi queues for true simultaneous firing. But right now we have the DMX macros, and these are extracted uh, from the finale output, and these are all the unique combinations of uh, basically scenes in there that. Uh, have are tied to channels so for example the safety channel you saw it was 44 seconds in finale it's going to show up here as taking channel 6 to 100, the value of 125 which is the arming value and then 44 seconds later taking it back down to zero and as you go through this there's a number of dmx channel manipulations that like for the very short flame you know it's going to turn on a flame for a uh, tenth of a second only and you have uh macros associated with the various flame heads etc so the other thing you can do here is then to make sure that true simultaneity simultaneity occurs is do what you do with any normal pyro file is group in the multi queues and then we do the grouping here and what you'll see is a lot of these that fire multiple flames at once are now tied together into individual multi queues uh, like this one's going to fire nine uh, dmx triggers at a time and you'll see the multi queues are now populated. So actually, the, the nine actually has to do with turning on all of the safety channels simultaneously. Then we have very long flames uh, on, on some things. And what it has done now is taken all the things that happen together and grouped them into multi queues so that the DMX channels on the DMX line are all going to change simultaneously. Um, and what you're seeing in a lot of these is they're going to invoke multiple DMX macros at once and, and, and go for the allotted time. So if we expand the multi queue, you'll see that I'm going to fire three different circle flamers at once. One of the circle flamers at address 10, another circle flamer is address 20, another circle flamer is address 30. So all three of those are basically going to get the exact same program. Uh, fired together but since there are three different base addresses the the flames will go simultaneously 
Um, and so this is really what you need to do to take a standard DMX component within uh, Finale and get it transferred to Mongoose. In this case, I'll save the file. And I'll say basic demo show 02 with already converted to multi queues and just save that out there. And then I can exit this. Then I can bring up Mongoose and now go over to open my show. And what I'll do is uh, go over to my desktop here, the demo vid and bring in the fire file I just created. And you'll see that it brings in the soundtrack and you know the first actual flame doesn't occur until you know four minutes and 20 seconds into the show but it works like any other show now if i had set this to be cronbox input uh, instead you would see the cronbox uh, controls up here um, and you would feed the time code let's say from starfire into mongoose and mongoose would be controlling the dmx uh, and starfire in this case was controlling the pyro so if I wanted to, you know, I don't have any units up right now, but we could still run the show and I can start from this selected script line. And I don't know if that's loud enough to hear, but you'll give you your countdown to the next DMX and I'll be sending out the multi cues. If only one thing's happening at a time, it has a single trigger DMX in the script, but you normally you don't have to worry about this too much. And it'll basically just proceed down the show, sending the commands out to the uh, one or more uh, field units set at logical ID 2. And all their DMX uh, outputs would be in sync with each other. And you could either use one long cable to connect all your fixtures, or you can use um, multiple field units also all addressed to two running into shorter cables. Um, that's really, you know, your choice just depending on the layout of the field. So hopefully that gets you through the initial uh, steps. Uh, encourage you to try it and play with it. Um, but this will work with, you know, any DMX uh, device that's really defined within Finale. It'll be imported into Mongoose and then played through Mongoose, either under its own power or uh, you know through external timing if you're easily getting conjunction with another system okay well thank you and uh, that's how to do uh, a straight import of dmx effects into mongoose uh, the next video will talk about how to attach dmx effects to um, buttons so that you can interactively choose entire sequences of dmx effects at runtime uh, kind of like being a DJ, uh, you could eliminate the notion of a fully um, choreographed show and instead present yourselves with a number of buttons that will let you perform really as you'd like uh, during a segment, you know, whether it's for concerts, whether it's for events and things like that. And then in the next one, I'll show you how to uh, pull that out. Okay, thanks a lot. Take care.